Uh, I met Taylor uh, in 2009, and uh, we was in an NCO development course. Everyone loved him. You could tell he just had this charisma about him. I was going through a lot of a lot of tough things, you know, from from losing a marriage to to not being able to see my kids to you know struggling at work and struggling with drinking. He was kind of the guy to go to for years. I'd, I'd reach out to him. We talk, and we 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 he'd give me advice. He he's just he was just a very positive, positive and funny guy to be around. It seemed like he found his place in life, and I was happy for him. And then. Uh, just last year, you know, um, I found out that he, he took his own life. Uh, my name is Vincent Rocco Vargas, 15-year uh, veteran. Uh, four years of those were active duty with 2nd of the 75th Ranger Regiment with uh, three combat deployments, two to Afghanistan, one to Iraq. Yeah, I, I remember originally talking to recruiters in junior high, thinking I'm going to join as an infantryman because it's just part of me wanted to see the war, but see it up close. Like, I identified as an Army Ranger and in there was no place for an army ranger in the civilian world, right? There's no position out there in jobs that say they're only hiring army rangers. I got out believing that that was gonna be enough to carry me years and years on, and, and realizing that I had to change that. I had to essentially close that chapter of my life and, and start a new chapter. I had to start to identify as more than just an army ranger. I was so proud of what I did and didn't wanna let it go. And I felt like if I, if I let it go, almost as if I was turning my back on my friends. When you go overseas with your buddies and living uh, that life, it's kind of a life and death situation. Every time you go on a mission and kick in a door, uh, that feeling, I, for some reason, brings men closer. Uh, you know that they have your back and, and you have theirs, and uh, it's kind of hard to ever uh, let go of that emotion. Yeah, like transitioning, transitioning out of the military was tough. I ended up kind of being more self-destructive to, you know, it wasn't conducive to trying to be successful in the civilian world. You know, I knew I was struggling with certain things. Uh, you know, I resorted to lots of drinking and, and, and self-medicating, if you will, and, and it made it harder because I didn't have friends to, to kind of fall back on and be like, you know, the, the guys that you usually can talk to, the guys you can vent to about stuff going on at home or, or things that you're struggling in life with, I didn't have that. I didn't want to open up to, to people that were not veterans. I didn't want to open up to guys that were not rangers. I didn't want to open up to to anyone. I kind of was losing everything that I believed in. You know, I grew up believing in uh, raising a family and being a good father, and I found myself not doing that. I know I needed help. You know, I needed to seek counseling, but I felt like it was it was almost weak to seek counseling. And I was realizing that <laughs> the reason my life was falling apart was because my own actions. You know, I finally just looked in the mirror and realized, like, stop making excuses, start doing the right things, start, you know, making all the right decisions to put myself in a better position. So um, I seek counseling. And so once I identified uh, I did have the problem and, and found the right kind of counseling, I, it didn't take long for me to start kind of putting back the pieces the rest of my life. You know, I started to kind of see the light at the end of the tunnel. I started to see the glass half full. And, uh, you know, you start realizing, I started to identify that that it was me. And eventually, you know, here I am today, you know, doing things in the business world successfully, uh, in the entertainment world successfully, and as well as now I, I do everything I can to help the veteran uh, community understand that transition is hard, but doable, right? And they're not alone. We, we've. It's a lot of us who have been through it and continue to, to push through, you know, one step, one step at a time. And for me, I can look back to them, I'm kicking butt. You know, I'm doing everything I can to be successful. You know, I think there's always struggle in that. There's always, there's always a little bit of step back here and there, but I'm always trying to move forward and, and educating myself and improving myself, improving myself as a father, as a husband, as just as an individual. You have to remember that. You know, I think there's a lot of veterans out there that forget about that. You know, for for years on the anniversary date, I can find a reason to drink, and, and I could find a reason to drink on Veterans Day. I could find a reason to drink on Memorial Day. I could find there's a million reasons the days I can find to drink in their memory, but that doesn't help me be successful in life. I don't ever want to have to look back and feel bad about that. I that I wasted this life. I'm going to give it my all. Essentially, I'm living my life for those who can't. <laughs>